those who disowned their parents, what was the final straw? My sibling died in the days leading up to his funeral my mother was so exquisitely awful that I stopped fantasizing about harming her, began fantasizing about my life in prison after her murder. At one point I was standing behind her at the top of a flight of stairs as she monologued about how everything was my fault. I could have pushed her, but instead promised myself that after I made it through the funeral I'd never speak with her again. This year marks a decade since I last spoke with her my only regret is not cutting her out of my life earlier. There truly wasn't one. It just was so much for so long that I just stopped. My mom was too proud ever to call me because in her head, she deserved to be called. My father chose to cut me out of his life when my wife asked him not to wear shoes in the house. Long and short, I was sad by uncles as a child, multiple occasion. Tons of rage issues because of it. Grew up in a single parent household with mom not in the picture. Fast forward, faced my demons to an extent, mended relationship with mom. Opened up to brothers and sisters and finally mom about the essay, suddenly am lying. I've always been a liar since I was a child, my brothers would never do a thing to hurt you. Straight up alienated by my family tree because said essay, ended the last convo with, you didn't protect me as a child, you won't protect support me as an adult, and you won't protect my children either. What use are you to me or any of us? Mother was a career crackhead. I traveled 15 hours by Greyhound bus back to Illinois to help her finish up some roofing jobs still incomplete. She intentionally got in a fight with me at the bus station after the jobs were done, didn't get me a ticket back, and ghosted me on 2500. I had maybe 30 to my name at the time. Then she shut off my cell phone immediately after driving away. Had to walk about 5 miles to a friend's house. He and a few of my other friends drove me back down to Alabama that night. Never spoke to her again. Generational trauma and religious trauma are two of the largest factors why I had a poor relationship with my parents with constantly having to keep up appearance escapades and never feeling like I'm enough for them coming in at a close second, not to mention the clear lack of respect for my time and space over and over again. Me coming out released quite the backlash from them you have brought great dishonor to your family and made a nightmare for your mother and so on, messaging me once a week or so to berate me for it. So once this happened, I changed my legal name, changed all my documents, dropped off my old phone wiped at their house, and noped out. It was a long process, but it really ended when my mom tried to sue my wife and me for grandparents' rights. Anything after that would've only helped her to build a case to legally kidnap our son. It was relatively small, when I stand back look, but it was clear that our relationship was always going to be me everyone else appending my life so he could do nothing at all. The final final straw was a request for me to attend an appointment that would mean a 1.5 hour bus ride each direction missing classes, missing work, make my own arrangement to stay somewhere overnight I couldn't stay in my parents home unless I slept in a sleeping bag on the floor somewhere I didn't own a sleeping bag all so my father could play happy family in public dot again. I didn't get on the bus dot I went to class dot I had a bad day at work dot then I slept in my own bed. I didn't mean it to be forever, but I realized while my work day was tanking I would still rather be doing that than pretending to be a happy family. Every day since has been better than it would be if you were in my life. He made good days miserable bad days hell. My mother gave me a long speech about the morality of being a lesbian a couple of days before I a woman got married to my wife. She's pretty high up on her horse for a drug addict who stole from me. It was a long time coming, but the straw that broke the camel's back was berating me for not coming to a family function when I told my father that I had something that was completely unskippable at work. I had been abused by my father for years, his way of getting back at me for my mother leaving him I suppose. I just lost it at him and told him what I thought of him. I haven't spoken to him or his family that all took his side every single time in 15 years. After telling them I was getting divorced, they told me one my ex would always be their son and that they loved him more than me to be fair they did try to backtrack and say they loved us both too that no one else would ever love me and I'd realize I was ruining my life when I died alone 3 they only loved me because the bible said they had to 4 that they were writing me out of their will and leaving it to my ex because this was proof I was mentally unstable and once I'd come to my senses and gone back to him it would be mine anyway. They were emotionally abusive my whole life but I kept going back and making excuses for them not helped because my ex was abusive too. It's easy to believe you deserve to be treated badly when it's all people are telling you. Eventually I realized that I deserve to be happy and I just couldn't do that while continuing a relationship with them. They are never going to change. I think they honestly believe they are saying these things out of love and have no awareness of how they've hurt me. Boyfriend's family, but I feel the effects. Took boyfriend's brother's side over his daughter the granddaughter over essay allegations. 
grandma made granddaughter call her abuser, and look at pictures of him to try, and convince her she was wrong haven't spoken a word to them since. Parents got divorced between 1214. During that period my dad became an evangelical Christian. All of the sudden, everything revolved around God and Jesus. This continued until he moved to the US when I was 18 because America is doing the Lord's work. He completely ghosted his two teenage children, and started a new Christian family. He came to visit one time. He never met his three grandchildren and died in 2022. It had been 17 years since I had seen him. I did not go to the funeral because, to me, he had been dead a long time. My father, he physically and verbally abused my sister and I when we were kids. We got taken away and put into foster care. Finally our mom was found and we went with her. For a couple of years after I wanted nothing to do with my father, but around 10 years old I was like why not? I had gone into therapy and I started to talk to him again. For the next 20 years I did everything I could to have him be a part of my life. I was always calling, emailing, sending messages arranging for us to see each other. He was military moved around a lot, and he probably reached out first less than five times. If I didn't message call him first we could go months without communicating. What finally did it for me was when I became a mom. I would do anything for them, protect them, I could never imagine hurting my children. It really got me thinking about my relationship with my father, and I realized I how shitty he is, yes I forgave him for everything, but did he do anything to deserve that? Big fucking no. I wrote him a long ass message told him how I felt and he responded, but it was all bullshit. It's been two years now since we have talked and I wish I had done it sooner. Mom got arrested for child neglect and animal cruelty. My dad was always a functional alcoholic and hit retirement about six years ago. I knew this was going to be his downfall with having nothing better to do. I stopped calling him after 3 pm because talking to him was impossible. That slowly became a noon cutoff and then I just couldn't handle it. I have a half-sister that he doesn't claim and has had nothing to do with for 40 years. She connected with family via one of those DNA sites, and my dad didn't believe it. He made up a story that they needed to do a paternity test on a 45-year-old to properly set up his will. Then he was so drunk he misread the results, and called her telling her he's not her father. Mind you, this was all because my cousins asked if she would like to come to a family reunion and meet them. I told him he needs to get help and apologize he told me he didn't care if he ever talked to me again. I cut off communication then and it's been about two years. It really sucks because I miss my dad, but I just try to remember him as when I was younger. I had a kid and realized I didn't want them having any influence in her life. Their influence on mine was bad enough. The situation with my abusive parent got to the point where I was so depressed and at the end of my rope, that I was very, very close to ending everything. At that point, I had no choice but to walk away or end up six feet under. My only regret is waiting until my late 40s to finally walk away. Wish I had the courage to do it 30 years earlier. After going no contact several times, it was finally when my dad died, and I had to fly across the country, and I left my kids with my mother she told them I abandoned them, and then kidnapped my oldest, and left her in another state with another family member. Haven't spoken to her in almost 3 years, it's very nice. My dad had contacted me about three times by the time I was 15 he realized he might die soon and got in contact with my brothers, and I like nothing happened my brothers took him back very kindly. I did not, he eventually started continuously asking for money acting like he had part in my hour upbringing they finally cut him off as well tbh it's me being petty, my dad has about six kids and I'm the only girl. I like to think that his only daughter never talking to him was the karma for all he's done. After 50 years of crazy, I decided I would prefer to have a peaceful life built on my own terms. Just because I am the kid doesn't mean I have a lifetime obligation to participate in their insanity. 